Namaste, Srimatre Namaha. Welcome to the book reading series once again, where we take up uh, a new book every week and try to uh, learn from the teachings, from the various insights that are shared in depth by the author who has experienced these, uh, you know, like the wisdom bubbles in their own consciousness. And today, the book that I will be sharing or reading from is basically this book. It's called Letters from Sri Ramanashramam by Suri Nagama. So this is a huge book. It has 273 letters and it's a very voluminous book. And at that time, uh, when Bhagwan was there, I don't know. I cannot just imagine the dedication that must have been put up to actually compile or put together these uh, extracts. So for us to even read it is uh, such a, a difficult task, but uh, see the devotees' uh, devotion and dedication towards the Guru in compiling these uh, recollections of incidences that happened at Sri Ramanashramam in the presence of Sri Bhagwan Ramana Maharishi and were recorded by Suri Nagama, one of his devotees. So I got this book in the year October 2014 and it's been 10 years and uh, there is a deep mystery uh, in how Guru's grace actually works in our life. And why I say this is that whenever I am in doubt or confusion, I go back to uh, uh, just opening any particular page of this book and I find it as if like Bhagwan speaks to me through the exact spoken spontaneous uh, words that come up on the book. So today again when I had to do this recording I just opened a page spontaneously and uh, literally it actually exploded me into tears because of the compassion and the karuna of the Guru. And I will be reading that extract from you for you very soon. In the meanwhile, I am just talking about the introduction to this book. It's the publisher's note. So I'd like to share a little bit about this book on why this book was made and how it was curated. So the first edition came around in 1970 and uh, during the closing years of Sri Ramana Maharishi's bodily existence, his silent radiance and incomparable teachings attracted thousands of seekers to his ashram in South India. Suri Nagama was the chosen instrument to cast the immortal sayings of this illumined divine personality onto paper and to paint an exquisite picture of a Rishi's life in modern times. She did this in the form of 273 letters to her brother, Sri D.S. Shastri, who translated them from Telugu for the benefit of the English reading public. They cover the last five years of the master's earthly life and are of particular relevance because they were shown to Bhagwan prior to being mailed. There is no other book from this period that captures so well the enlightened personality and profound sayings of the master. These recordings will certainly guide seekers for countless generations. 135 letters were translated into English and first published as volume one in 1962. Another 106 letters were added to this and published in 1970. And in this 2006 edition of Letters from Sri Ramanashramam, we have included an additional 31 letters that were published by the ashram in 1978. The 28 recollections of Sri Ramanashramam from this book have also been added at the end of this volume, providing a complete collection of Suri Nagama's remarkable description of the days that she spent at the feet of the master. Another book written by Suri Nagama and published by the ashram as My Life at Sri Ramanashramam is mostly autobiographical and will certain, certainly be of interest to the sincere reader. So this book is available at Ramanashramam. If you wish to get a copy, you can get it from there. 
what I'm going to read today is the 87th letter here, which is called the Divine Force. I went to the hall at 2.30 this afternoon. Bhagwan was there already, reading a slip of paper which someone had handed over to him. I sat there waiting to hear what Bhagwan would say. Bhagwan folded the paper with a smile and said, All this will occur if one thinks that there is a difference between Bhagwan and oneself. If one thinks that there is no such difference, all this will not occur. Is it enough if we say that there is no difference between Bhagwan and ourselves? Is it not necessary to inquire who oneself is and what one's origin is? Before one thinks that there is no difference between oneself and Bhagwan? Why is Bhagwan saying this? I was thinking of asking Bhagwan why he was thus misleading us, but could not summon up enough courage to do so. I do not know if Bhagwan sensed this misgiving of mine, but anyways, he himself began speaking again as follows. Before one could realize that there is no difference between him and Bhagwan, one should first discard all these unreal attributes, which are really not his. One cannot perceive truth unless all these qualities are discarded. There is a divine force or Chaitanya Shakti which is the source of all things. All these other qualities cannot be discarded unless we get hold of that force. And sadhana is required to get hold of that force. I got courage as I heard those words and said unconsciously, So, is there a force, Bhagwan? Yes, he replied. There is a force. It is that force that is called Svarana, which is consciousness of the self. I said with a quivering voice. Bhagwan said casually that it is enough if we think that there is no difference between us and God. But we can discard these unreal attributes only if we are able to get hold of that force. Let it be the divine force or the consciousness of the self. Whatever it is, should we not know it? We are not able to know it, however much we try. Never before this did I ask Bhagwan questions in the presence of others so boldly. Today, the inner urge was so great that words came out of my mouth of their own accord in the course of the conversation, and my eyes were filled with tears, and so I turned my face towards the wall. A lady sitting next to me told me afterwards that Bhagwan's eyes also became moist. How tender-hearted he is towards the humble. Bhagwan sometimes used to say, The jnani weeps with the weeping, laughs with the laughing, plays with the playful, sings with those who sing, keeping time to the song. What does he lose? His presence is like a pure transparent mirror. It reflects our image exactly as we are. It is we that play the several parts in life and reap the fruits of our actions. How is the mirror or the stand on which it is mounted affected? Nothing affects jnanis as they are mere supporters. The actors in this world, the doers of all acts, must decide for themselves what song and what action is for the welfare of the world? What is in accordance with Shastras and what is practicable? That is what Bhagwan used to say. This is a practical illustration. So this was the reading from the book Letters from Sri Ramanashramam. And what an illuminating read. What a wonderful uh, experience of the Guru and his Karuna in which his eyes brim up with tears just as a mirroring effect of the devotee. Thank you very much. Shri Matre Namaha.